Hi guys, today we're gonna talk about uh, passwords, web security, hacking, and other stuff. So let's start with hashes. Uh, what's a hash? Hash is a, and I'll explain why this is relevant later. Hash is a mathematical algorithm or function that takes a variable length data as an input and produces a fixed length number as an output. So uh, basically, you uh, it's a, it's again it's a formula. So you feed it a bunch of data and then it, you get the, a number as a result. Doesn't matter how long the data is, the number will still be uh, in a certain range. So from one to ten million or whatever. So uh, well, let's calculate. The, let's create a simple hash function. So um, for for uh, ease of understanding, uh, we'll use uh, we'll try to calculate hashes of uh, text passwords. And to make um, the calculation more uh, um, math friendly, we'll substitute each letter with its corresponding number in the alphabet. So A will be one, B will be two, C will be three, and so on until we get to Z. So now let's create a formula. So I, I'm just going to the actual formulas for calculating uh, hash functions that are uh, hashes are actually very very complex and they're developed by mathematicians. So I'll make a simple one just to make it easier to understand. So we will denote uh, letters of our uh, passwords as L1, L2, and so on, and L1 will be the first letter, L2 will be the second, and so on. So the formula that I made up will be L1 plus L2, and then they take this result multiplied by L3. So the number of the first letter of the alphabet multi uh, adds the, the number of the second letter of the alphabet and multiply it by the third letter of the, uh, not the alphabet, sorry, the password first letter of the password plus second letter of the password multiplied by the third letter of the password. So if we have password ABC, we will, uh, this will produce 1 plus 2 equals 3, multiply 3 equals 9. So the hash, using our hash of ABC, we get 9. And if we try to calculate hash of ABD, 1 plus 2, multiply 4, 12. 3 multiplied 4, 12. And AAA will be 1 plus 1, multiply 1 equals 2. So you can see similar data produces completely drastically different uh, hash output. And uh, those hashes are there one way. There is no way to calculate to get the ABD from number 12. There is no formula to do that, it, and it's mathematically extremely difficult to do in real in real world hash functions. So, uh, you know, the question is, what if the password is longer than three letters long? Because our formula only takes three letters. We fold the password, so we will arrange the letters in in columns this way. We will break the password down or data input data into chunks of uh, say three in our case, and then we'll have A B C D B. So A, B, C, D, B, and then nothing here because we have no no character here. So And then we'll add the columns. So we'll add A plus D equals 5, B plus B equals 4, C plus nothing equals 3. So we will fold our password into just three numbers, and then we'll apply our hash function to the three numbers. So uh, we'll get 27. So and this is how websites work and why hashes are relevant. So you enter your username and password on the web page. When you register, you hit submit. The website calculates the hash of whatever you entered of your password. Uh, it doesn't calculate the hash of all the data, just of, just of the password. And it stores the username, your email, and other stuff in the database. And it, then it stores the hash of the password in the database. So no actual password store this plain text in the database, just the hash of it. So if the database gets stolen, the hackers just get the hashes, which are pretty useless. And during the login stage, you punch in your username and password, you hit submit. The website looks up the stored username, uh, user record by the username, and it looks for the stored hash of the password. And then it, the website calculates the hash of whatever you entered during the login stage, and it compares the stored hash with the hash of what you just entered as a password. And if they match, you log in. Now, is it possible for two passwords produce the same hash? Yes, it's possible, and this is called a collision. So let's say we'll use our formula here, and if we can calculate the hash of ABC, we get 9. But if we calculate the hash of DEA, 4 plus 5, multiply 1, we're using our formula, we also get 9. So we have two different data, but these passwords, are com they're not even close, but they produce the exact same hash. This is all called a collision. Collisions do exist in a real algorithm, but the, the rate of collision, how basically how close or how far the data is apart, is very very high, so you will have um, very slim chance. We're talking one in millions of two pieces of data having the same hash because the hash itself, the number, is really large. So.
So most common algorithms are, will be MD5, SHA1, CSC32, SHA256, and so on. MD5 is the most common one on most gaming message boards and so on, different forums, uh, you know, picture galleries and so on. So, and those are the examples of MD5 hashes. So you can see the number is the same length, and this is the data that produces this hash. So uh, this eight, the number 8676, if we calculate MD5 hash of this number, we get this number here. And if we calculate the hash of antelope, we get this, num this number here. And so on. So you can see the numbers are really, those are hexadecimal. If you convert them to decimal, it will be, you know, billions of billions of billions. So very large numbers. So now we'll take a look at the sample database. So this will be your typical forum database. You'll have your username, you have the hash of the password, and you will have the email and you know Facebook page and profile uh, uh, information like uh, MSN ID and all that stuff. So this is what hackers would steal if they hacked the forum or the message board or whatever. So they will steal uh, this data set and they will see the pass the, this um, this hashes. They won't see the actual passwords, but they such thing as rainbow tables, and what rainbow tables are, are pre-calculated hashes for different uh, data. So the hackers would take, let's say, uh, English dictionary, right, and they will go through every word and they'll calculate the hash of every word and they'll store it in the database. So now they'll have a pair of hash uh, and the password, hash and the password, hash and the password for every word. So, and they will, uh, they'll go even further, they'll actually substitute um, some of the letters with numbers. So let's say some people use number four for letter A, so they'll calculate the hash of antelope and also calculate the hash of antelope with number four instead of letter A, and same with number three for letter E and all the possible combinations, and this all will be stored because uh, modern computers are very efficient in looking up data in existing, you know, existing data. Calculating hashes takes a long time, um, you know, if you do it on large scale. So um, rainbow tables are pre-calculated on really fast computers. I mean, you can do it at home if you want to, but it's going to take you a long time to pre-calculate hashes for, you know, millions and millions of passwords. But uh, we'll get back to our topic. So the hackers steal, you know, your typical form database and you know, they get this hash and they look up in the rainbow tables and this they try to look up this hash and they find it and they know that this hash produces, uh, the, the word that produces this hash is antelope from their, from their tables. So now, if let's say they try to Google Mike's uh, username and they find a bunch of websites, they'll actually try to go and log in with this username and that password on those websites. And if those websites happen to use MD5, which a lot of them do, for hash calculations, they will be able to log in. In fact, the word in the rainbow table can be actually different uh, from the actual password because of collision. So they can find the collision, they can find some other word that produces this hash, and they'll still be able to log in because websites compare hashes, they don't compare the actual plain text, pas plain text passwords. So the, here comes the problem with uh, using the same login on multiple websites. Let's say if Mike uses this email for PayPal, and if PayPal theoretically were, they don't use MD5, but if they were using MD5, Mike can actually, uh, sorry, the hackers can actually log in into Mike's PayPal account with this password and you know steal all his money. In fact, even if, even if PayPal doesn't use MD5, if they can steal uh, this hash, and then derive this text password from the hash somewhere else, uh, you know, uh, somewhere else, they'll, they'll, they'll use that to try to log in into Mike's, you know, PayPal account, trying to use that word. So, because this might be the actual password, this might not be a collision, but might be that most likely actually will be the actual password that he's using. So they'll log into his PayPal account and just transfer all his money. And they'll do this on his bank account, They'll actually try to see if this email is used as a login ID on different banks and so on. So um, using uh, the same password on multiple websites is actually a really, really bad idea, as you can see, because if at least one of them, one of those websites uses MD5 hashes for storing passwords, and uh, the password is a simple word like this, um, you know, and it has in, in the rainbow table, they will be able to see what the what the plain text, what the password is that generated that hash, and then use that to log in on all the other websites that this user registered on. So um, try to use different passwords. Um, if you uh, you can write them down at home, of course, and sa store them in a safe place or memorize them. And there's a ton of software that helps. Uh, one of them is KeePass, uh, uh, K E P 
P-A-S-S, or sorry, K-E-E-P-A-S-S, and there's many, many others. Basically, it's a software that will contain, that they'll uh, keep track of all your passwords and it'll, it'll save them as an encrypted file on your hard drive. So if your computer gets hacked and someone steals your container for your password, they, they can't get into it because it's encrypted. So, um, but that's, that's just the gist of it. So, uh, as you can see, even though the websites take measures to protect your, uh, uh, you know, protect your passwords, it's still possible to uh, uh, calculate or uh, derive, not derive, but sorry, but to uh, find what the actual password that generated your MD5 hash from uh, rainbow tables. And there is rainbow tables for SHA1, which produces much longer numbers, and so is for SHA256 and so on. Um, again, those are takes a long time to calculate, but they do exist pre-calculated, and they keep getting updated every day. And oftentimes, the website that get compromised, uh, the hackers will actually modify the website to capture the passwords that users enter during the registrations and email them along with the hash. So those rainbow tables can be also built using stolen passwords or captured passwords and not necessarily pre-calculated in advance. So anyways, the gist of it, don't use the same password on multiple websites because if one of them gets hacked and happens to use MD5 and you use a simple password, it will be found in the, in the rainbow table and it will be used to log in everywhere else that you're registered on and you know that have you have it'll be really really bad consequences for you that's it for today